Okay, so students who were absent or um, didn't have the second part of 16.2, I've made this PowerPoint video just so that you can get caught up. This was originally our lesson on Friday, January 7th, and you have homework at the end of the 16.2 lesson. So the lesson took two days, and this is the second day. So we ended yesterday um, working as a table trying to finish up number 12 on page 210. Now you're going to have to have your book in front of you okay, in order to follow along on this slideshow. Okay, so number 12, this was the picture that you were supposed to reference, the diagram that's on page 210. Um, we decided that in class that 12a, when we um, define the word exterior, that it means on the outside. An example would be exterior paint, um, exterior furniture, which would be like outdoor furniture, uh, exterior of your house, exterior of a car. And then B, we decided the outside angles or the exterior angles were angle 1, angle 2, angle 5, and angle 6. And those are the angles on the outside. So then likewise, uh, 12C, interior, interior means the inside, interior paint, your car's interior, interior design or examples. And then D, the, all the other angles, angle 3, angle 4, angle 7, angle 8, those are all angles on the inside. So we did have homework, so this is always where we pause and we get out our planner and write our homework down. And of course I have my little math funny. That's a protractor in the oven there. Okay, so a word wall definition here is alternate exterior angles are angles on the opposite side of the transversal line and outside the parallel lines. So let's break that down a little bit. We said exterior was outside. The word alternate, you might need to look up in the dictionary. Alternate kind of means to switch, switch sides. Um, that's what's happening when I say angles on the opposite sides. That's where the alternate comes in. And then transversal is the slanted line that we have in our drawings. So we have parallel lines and then we have that slanted line. We said that was called a transversal yesterday. And so here's an example of alternate exterior angles. Now that's a pair of angles. All of the definitions that we are going through today, they're called relationships of angles. And all of these relationships are congruent relationships. So if you remember yesterday, there was only two um, ways that they relate on this diagram. They either were congruent or they were supplementary, meaning they add up to 180. So all of our relationships we're talking today are only congruent relationships. So alternate exterior angles are congruent. And here's the other pair of alternate exterior angles. So there are two pair here, like two pair of shoes. So the four angles all together, but two pairs that are congruent. And then likewise, alternate interior angles. Angles on the opposite side of the transversal line Right, so same as the exterior angles, but this side, they're on the inside of the parallel lines. This is another word wall word, and I think this is a good place to mention that you are to have a vocabulary quiz on Wednesday. So in your composition book, as you're taking these notes, the vocabulary, how, if you decided to underline them during the week or highlight them with your blue highlighter, try to keep consistent with that because it'll be easy to see all of your vocab from 16.1 and 16.2 because they'll all be marked the same way. So here's a picture of alternate interior angles. We're on the opposite side of the transversal and these are congruent angles. And then there's another pair. It looks like this. So again, two pairs of alternate interior angles that are congruent. Okay, in class we had another table discussion group to answer 13 and 14. So let's just take a minute and kind of go over um, this information, the answers that's on page 211. So 
Um, 13A is literally just the definition of alternate exterior angles. So we made a note there to say see our notebook, our C composition book. So you don't have to write out the definition a second time. The same thing, excuse me, the same thing for 13C for alternate interior angles. We just said C composition book. So for 13B, it, um, it says name two pairs of alternate exterior angles in the diagram. So as I'm looking at this diagram, 1 and 2 are exterior and 6 and 5 are exterior. So in order to alternate, I would say 1 and 5 is a pair of alternate exterior angles and 2 and 6 are a pair of alternate interior angles. And then we can jump down to 13D, which says name the two pairs of alternate interior angles. So that would be 13, I'm sorry, 3 and 7, because I'm on the other side of the transversal, and then 4 and 8. Um, number 14, it says the above diagram shows a pair of parallel lines cut by a transversal. If the measure of angle 2 is 70 degrees, then determine the measure of all the other angles. So if you remember, that was our bell ringer yesterday. We uh, measured one angle with our protractor, and then we had to make a prediction about all the others. So here, if I know number 2 is 70, that means I know number 6 is 70, because those are alternate exterior angles. I also know number 4 and number 8, because those are alternate interior angles. So all of those would be 70. And then the rest, 1, 3, 7, and 5, would all have to be the supplementary version of that. So that would all be 110, because 110 plus 70 equals 180. OK, the next word wall word is corresponding angles, angles that are the same in the same location at each intersection on the figure. Okay, sounds like it's complicated, but when you see it in the picture, like this. So here, these angles, if you look at one intersection, so one like cross of lines, this would be in the upper left corner. And if I look at the other intersection, it's in the upper left corner. So really, you could just say, if I slide the same angle down, it's in the same location. So there's going to be four pairs of these. So this would be your lower left, so it's in the same location in both intersections. These are corresponding angles. Again, corresponding angles. And this would be the last pair of corresponding angles. So same location on the intersection at each place. Okay, so then we um, had partners across the table, and we had quite a few people absent. So we, again, just did discussion groups a lot of the time here. So we answered 16 through 18. Um, we briefly mentioned 15 because 15A says define corresponding angles. So you could just write, again, see your composition book. So in this diagram, corresponding angles um, on page 212 would be 1 and 7, 8 and 6, 3 and 5. So some classes we did have time for 15B, and some we had to jump straight to number 16. So I just want to make sure, you know, we all have the same information here. So 16 says um, they're cut by a transversal, parallel lines. Angle 1 is 42, find angle 2, and then say why. When I look at figure A, it says 1 and 2 are alternate interior angles, which means they are congruent. So angle 2 is also 42 degrees. Figure B, 1 and 2 are alternate exterior angles. And angle 1 is 138, which automatically means angle 2 is 138. So I think it's helpful to look for the relationship of the angle first, because if they have this special relationship, I already know they're congruent, and I don't have to do any calculating. So in figure C, 1 and 2, those are corresponding angles. So they, again, are congruent. So angle 2 is 57 degrees. Last word wall word is vertical angles. Last word wall word of today. <laughs> Let me be very specific. It says opposite angles that are formed when two lines intersect. 
So here are two lines that intersect and that opposite sides are congruent. So here is a little memory tool. If you look at the top, it looks like a V for vertical. In the bottom, if we add a little crossbar, we have the word angles. So the top and the bottom angles are congruent. The two side angles are congruent. This is what that would look like on our normal diagram. So the angles across from each other are congruent. And then most classes had a chance to do number 19, where it just says to label the pairs of vertical angles. So let me go to the diagram. It looks like 1 and 3 are vertical angles, 2 and 8, 7 and 5, and 4 and 6. So again, four pairs of vertical angles. You will find that I have put this, this is called a graphic organizer, and I put one of these in each of your folders, and we taped these into our 16-2 notes, um, and it's just a little bit uh, helpful to have all the vocabulary of today, all these congruent angles, all on one diagram. So it's color-coded. If you look, the red angles there are corresponding, so they're congruent. So in parentheses there, it has the congruent sign. And then um, the orange are alternating exterior, the yellow is vertical, um, the blue is alternate interior. The only thing we didn't talk about in our lecture today uh, was the same side interior. So we know that angles next to each other that make a line are supplementary because those are, um, um, you know, they go together, they make the line. So it's when they're non, um, It's when they're non-adjacent. So when they're adjacent, we know, okay, they're next to each other, they make 180. When they're non-adjacent, they can still make 180 degrees, and that's what the same side interior angles are. So that green represents two angles that when I add them together, they are supplementary. And then some classes we had time to do one of the check your understandings, but I'm going to go ahead and review both because I think it's just good practice. So for number 20, it says identify each pair of angles, and um, they gave us, you know, five, and we are supposed to label them. So A, angle RHJ, so it's really important to know um, how to find these angles, and I always mark my drawing as I go so I can figure out which angles I'm talking about. Um, just a little bit hard to do here on the PowerPoint. So RHJ and RKS, so if I'm looking at those, I'm seeing, oh, those are corresponding. They're in the same location at both intersections. And B, CHK and SKH, I'm going to say those are alternate interior angles. And then OKU and HKS, when I locate both of those, those are vertical. And we're at D, which is angle CHK and UKO, are corresponding. And last, I've got RHJ and OKU. I'm going to say those are alternate exterior angles. And that leads us to the last problem. We had time to do this in most classes. This one's a little bit trickier, but it is like one of our homework questions, so I feel like it's super important that we go over it. Um, this says that we have alternate interior angles and the measures are these algebraic expressions determine the measure of each of the angles. So I'll let you read that for yourself first and then I would always mark the text here so the first text I'm going to highlight or underline is alternate interior angles. I know that means those two angles are congruent. They're the same measure. So I automatically can put those two angles equal to each other. So I can say the angle of measure the measure of angle ABC equals the measure of ADF. So I just put these expressions together and now I need to solve for x in order to know what the measures are. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 8x from both sides because I need to get all the variables on one side. 
And so that means my 8x um, cancels on the right, and I only have 2x left on, I'm sorry, I have no 8x left on the left, and I have 2x left on the right. And now I need to get my numbers on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and add 20 because 20 is being subtracted. Remember, we always do the opposite. So those, the negative 20 and positive 20 make 0. And then I can go ahead and um, divide both sides by 2. And I found out that x equals 12. So now I'm still not done. It says determine the measure of each of the angles. So I need to find the angle measure of ABC. So 8x, which x is 12, plus 4, I put that in my calculator and I get that it equals 100 degrees. Again, I put in for angle ADF, I put in 12 for x, 10 times 12 plus 4 equals 100 degrees. And I said they were congruent, and it works out that they really are congruent when I put them into the formula, so that's automatically my check. And here's the homework, page 212, 22 through 28, and that is on Schoology. Now, my only little hint for you is number 28. It says to explain, and what I, your explanation can be just your own work to solve. So don't get too caught up with like complete sentences. You know, this is math class, and I'm pretty lenient about that. So if you want to show your work um, instead of writing sentences, I'm okay with that. So I will see you in class on Monday.